Welcome to the 1875 podcast. This podcast is all about Blackman Rovers and it's brought to you by the number one fan Rovers website, roverschat.com. Welcome back to the 1875 podcast. It is the first one as us uh, top of the league. And let's hope everyone from now is uh, top of the league. Um, so welcome back, Tom, after you deserted me last week. <laughs> um, how's it going? No, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's not been a bad week at all, has it? Uh, top of the table. Um, albeit having played those three more games than Wigan. Um, sure he's really slipped up last night though, which means that there's, uh, I think promotion's basically uh, in our hands now. Finally. Uh, after that slip up. Um, it's all down to us now. Yeah. Well, I suppose we had it with Fleetwood, didn't we? When uh, we beat Fleetwood, it was in our hands, but then we dropped points against Northampton. I think they've so, always been a game behind, um, aren't they? Shrewsbury. No, I don't know about the thing. At that I point. don't think that they were. I think that um, at that point, we played a midweek mate, game oh, no, and okay. I think not many other teams did. Um, that was one of our games that we had to catch up on, though, yeah. if I'm right. I could be wrong with that one. Um, but anyway, it doesn't matter. They, they've leveled on the games now. We was, they slipped up last night and... And promotions in our hands. So all that talk that Shrewsbury's game in hand means that they could have a five point, five point lead on us um, turned out to be complete rubbish. And instead, um, we're top of the table by by a point. Yeah, we've got our eyes on Wigan now. Um, I don't know whether they've got one of their game in hand before the next FA Cup game, but. Uh, if not, I don't believe the um. Do. That's going to be four games in hand by oh. the time we get to that that point. Yeah. So. Do you, think, I, do you think that's, I imagine they will have one. Do actually. you think it's an advantage for them having the momentum of the FA Cup, or do you think it's going to be a distraction with them four games backing up and and having to play Saturday, Tuesday when other teams won't be? I think that it can be both both positive and negative. Um, winning breeds confidence and if you're able to beat the best team in uh, England like they did do with City um, that's that's going to give you a confidence boost but at the same time is it, is it seven games in 21 days they've got to is that what they've it got is? to play um, that's the a number that I've read. I don't know how, how true that is. It's the number that I've read on, on the different uh, forums and stuff. Um, so seven in 21 days is a lot. And that can be positive and negative. The games come thick and fast, meaning you can get into that habit of winning. Um, but at the same time, it can also lead to, to fatigue and... Um, that isn't good at this stage of the season. You want you want to be fit. Um, so I think the way it impacts Wigan is yet to be seen. Um, I think preferably they'd have drawn against City um, and not scored that, that yeah. equaliser. Then City would have absolutely destroyed them at their place, at the Etihad. Um, because then they play the extra game um, and they also uh, maybe take a bit of a confidence hit. Not that you would... Uh, not that there would have been anything to be ashamed of in losing to City um, at the Etihad if, if that's how things would have panned out but that's just how football can work uh, isn't it but they've won and you know fair play yeah. to them as well um, you got to give them give them that that's a fantastic win but in terms of how it can impact the league I think that remains to be seen um, it's it's one of those, and uh, you seem to say it a lot, but we will just have to wait and see in regards to that. I'm hoping it has a negative effect on the league form, obviously. Um, 
but it it could go yeah, either way, it, to be honest. It depends. I think it depends massively on the team, how the team or I can't, the mindset of the team. Um, because sometimes it can be Saturday, Tuesday. If you're winning, you want Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. Can't you just keep them games coming, keep the wins coming? Um, it's when you because was the last game they lost to Blackpool. Um, so they're yeah, probably, the probably quite happy to have a break and go and play City and, and get a win and like so confident going to be booming. But yeah, if they get on a roll, then. It's just a case of seeing, like, like, like you said, um, those Saturday, Tuesday games. If they're coming and, and they're winning, they're playing well. Then that's a bad thing for us, because when you're in that winning mood, it's hard to get out of it. Just like if you're losing all the yeah. time, it's hard to get out of that that losing um, streak. Um, so, I mean, the league title will be nice, like I've said all season, and I've always said. That I've always been saying that I'm still predicting we finish first, and I still am doing. Um, but the main thing is automatic promotion, whether that is first or second. Well, not even, well. The main thing is promotion. Sorry, whether that's first, second, yeah. or through playoffs. Um, so, yeah, it's. Well, you want you want to look at Wigan, um, but if we just do what we need to do, win the games that we've got to win, um, then everything should fall into place. Well, the bit the is 4th of March, is it? Sunday the 4th of March. Um, if we win that, we would be uh, five points clear, which would be really helpful for us. Well, yeah, there's the mentality behind that as well. Having the games in hand, there's a mentality to it. So if, if we've got five points... Uh, on them, which is a, a decent amount of points to have ahead of a, of a team, it can have an adverse, an adverse effect mentally on them, because that means that they've then got the pressure yeah. to go out and win the games, or Blackburn are still going to be in first place. Um, I'd still say that Wigan are in the driver's seat in terms of it, because it is in their hands. If they beat us and then... Um, when they win the games in hand, then well, if they're just what could they have on us? Games, uh, uh, yeah. It's five points, isn't it? Am I right in that? Six. No, no, it'd be, it'd be. It's if you go off the basis. This is how football works. If you're off the basis that we're going to win every single game between now and the time that they catch up um, to us, yeah. Um, in terms of games played. And we win every single game apart from the Wigan game, then Which is they could have nine points on us. Difficult gap to recover, especially with, um, the, with the games that we'll have left at that point as well. That's a big gap to, a gap to recover from. Yeah, but it is worth noting that football doesn't work like that, and both us and Wigan will drop points between now and the end of the season, or even between now and when Wigan have their games in hand. Well, look um, at what we were doing with our games now. We were classing them as like bankers, weren't we? Oh, that's three points yeah. on the board. That's another three points. And then we went and like drew, drew them. Yeah, it's like the Fleetwood we one. Uh, yeah, you're right. We all looked at it and thought, well, yeah, we're about three points behind or two points behind or whatever. But when we uh, have the game in hand, we'll be a point ahead rather than two points behind. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work out like that, did it? So the games in hand aren't bankers. And... Um, points on the board uh, is is the important the important stat. The games in hand though mean that currently Wigan still have it in their hands in terms of the league title. Just like at the moment we have it in our hands over the second place to Shrewsbury and to some degree Rotherham who are in fantastic form at the moment. They've yeah, won, they're, they're um, on a hell of a run, aren't they? Yeah. Um, but if you're looking at just, we'll move on to Barry in a minute because this is a Blackburn podcast, not Wigan. But um, Wigan yeah. have the worst form of the last two games in the top fourteen teams. They're the, they're yeah, the they're, only two to have lost the last. Yeah. Uh, they're the only the only team to have lost the last two games. Uh, That's the old way down to Doncaster, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And then Oxford are in fifteenth. The next 
team to have lost the last two. South End and Blackpool the last two games. So that helped massively with us catching up, obviously. Yeah, that has helped massively. Um, it's meant that meant that they've not that we've been able to take take this this first place. Um, and those are the sort of games, especially the Blackpool one. I mean, you can sort of forgive the South End one. Um, South End new manager in Chris Powell. I didn't expect South End to get a result, um, and I certainly didn't expect them to win. But I thought that it's a potential banana skin for Wigan in terms yeah. of only being able to pick up a draw. But Southend went there and got a fantastic three points. Blackpool, um, I didn't see that at all, given how yeah, I don't bad of a run won, that they were on. Uh, since before Christmas either. And they went and won 2 now. Yeah, they've been getting a lot of draws, haven't they? Yeah, they've been getting a lot of draws, just... Um, and and they're fighting for their lives down there at the bottom at the bottom of the table. Um, and they turned up and and give Wigan a good game and, and ran out deserved uh, two 0 winners from from what I've seen. Um, which shows there are no bankers. Just like when we play Walsall on Saturday, it's no banker. Do you think um, that Wigan had one eye on the cup game on Tuesday when they played Blackpool? Do you think that's possible? Um, they slipped up. Because if that is true, then that there is a possibility that they could drop more points due to the FA Cup. Um, I'm, I suppose that's the sort of question that you can't really answer unless you're in the the, <laughs> yeah. the Wigan camp, isn't it? Um, I think it's a possibility that maybe they had the sights set on that. Maybe they thought that Blackpool would just roll over, and because they just roll over, that that would have meant that they can be playing with one eye on this game and another eye on the City game. Yeah. But then you could also say that did Wigan expect to even get a replay out of City? Um, Probably not. You know what I mean? It's like I'm sure that Wigan looked at it as just a a, a good day to play the best football team in, in England and see uh, how you fare against them. And instead, they went and uh, went and knocked knocked them out. Um, I think at this stage of the season, would Wigan take get into Wembley in the FA Cup and finishing second over getting knocked out against Southampton and winning the winning League One? Um, Again, that would be a question for a, a, a Wigan yeah, fan. If there are any Wigan fans, you can um, answer that for us. <laughs> so I think at this stage of the season, yeah, maybe it will have an impact uh, in terms of looking at the FA Cup. Because the FA Cup is at the business end now. I think they're a game off Wembley. Um, and I remember when we were in that position, when we played Liverpool a couple of seasons back, um, I was much more um, interested in the FA Cup and the possibility of getting to Wembley than I was um, than I was yeah. the league because at the time I thought the league was starting to really get the playoffs were getting away from us weren't in the championship and that was the more important thing it's a different situation because we're going to still fight on that top end of the table but it, it is possible that it will um, at this stage they might just take their eye off professional footballers shouldn't do um, but um, yeah, it's possible. Well, hopefully they do. Um, but like you said, rather than charging, aren't they? I think they've won six in a row, so they need to keep their eye on it a little bit because they yeah, certainly don't want to drop out of the playoffs altogether, uh, out of the uh, automatics altogether. Um, but anyway, we'll move on to uh, onto the Berry game now. Um, first half was pretty, pretty, pretty poor. Uh, what did do? You, what did you think of the formation you started with? Um, I'm not. I thought it was like a three-five-two. Um, but I've read. I've... Yeah, it was like three centre halves and then the wing backs. Uh, uh, it was a. The thing is that formation. I was happy when I saw. Not happy, but I was like, you know, that's okay because when we when we reverted to that against Oldham and then against Portsmouth. Yeah. It worked, 
when we reverted to that mid-March. So I thought, well, clearly it's a system that Mowbray has been wanting to play. It's worked in the past couple of games. So why not? The problem was that I felt that the back yeah. five was far too flat. Um, it essentially, well, I say back five, the, the, the back three with then the other two wing backs yeah. who were essentially wingers, aren't they? I felt though that it was too they, they were too flat and what should have been a three three at the back with with then two wing backs either side pretty much turned into a what I thought was a flat back five. Um which didn't offer much. It meant that Graham's outlet was um Graham didn't have an outlet out wide, so he couldn't any any balls he won. There was no one on the wing, making making the overlap, because um, the winger was too far back. Um, it meant that Dak was having to play far too deep. He was brilliant, though. Um, he far far too deep. He was well, he was fantastic, and, yeah. but in the first half, he was too deep to have a good enough impact on the game, and that was through no fault of his own. That was just because. Of the formation we're playing, I think he was yeah. he was being made to sit too deep. Um, so I don't think the formation did work. But then Mowbray changed it or uh, did something at <laughs> half time, put a rocket up the bottoms, um, and they performed better. But I think that that had a lot to do with the introduction of Jack Payne when he finally came on. I do think yeah. we got the goal just before he came on, actually. But um, I thought Payne, yeah. when he came on, Definitely I think he's a marvellous yeah. footballer. See, it's my really, thoughts really, on really that really formation, liking. I think you can play that formation and be quite attacking and quite exciting. Um, but I just think he's set up tactically to, to, to have too many uh, defenders, if you will. Because when you look at that formation, I would have had Niambi. Um, or maybe Bell, or maybe, or maybe would have kept Bell there, uh, or Payne, because they are much faster. They are much more attacking to get up and down that wing. Whereas you go with Bennett, who he's getting on a bit. He's not got that speed. Uh, and Bell, I just thought they were they were put there to defend more than get forward and attack. Um, and with having two strikers, like you said, he's dropped that back. Um. And sort of like killed the threat that he had, and the strikers Armstrong didn't have the ball all day until he put it in the net. Um, I just think of it, maybe he changed that in the second half. I just mm. think he set up. It was a good formation. I just think his tactics were too defensive um, for us to really get anywhere. And the amount of long balls we wasted trying to just like boot it past the midfield. Yeah, there was problems there. I think I don't think it helped that. Uh... Corey Evans Smallwood with a midfield partnership as well. I do think actually yeah. that had Travis been available and not suspended, I think that there's a big chance that we would have seen Travis getting his first league start for the club um, against Bury. Uh, but <laughs> Evans and Smallwood. I've said before I quite like Evans, but he he really wasn't. He didn't play well. It's, uh, it's uh, every single Barry. time I see him, it's like I think that he can be a, a, a cracking player. I've seen it in the World the not the World Cup, the Euros for Northern Ireland yeah. uh, in, in twenty sixteen. You saw the ability that he that he does possess, but he's never really done it, not consistently, uh for Rovers. This is in the league that we're in and the quality of player that I think he can be. He should have. He should be tearing up this league. It should shouldn't be a problem for him. But every time I see him, he just he, his passes aren't 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 that great. Um, having Evans and Smallwood in that midfield two together meant that that's one of the reasons that Dak was having to come so deep to get the ball because they weren't finding him in the more advanced positions. Um, and, and none of it none of it worked. Um, But that's football, isn't it? It's trial yeah. and error. Mowbray saw that and he he, he made his amendments. Uh, 
did Payne come on for Evans? Um, was it? He, who came on? Was it? It was Payne and oh god, uh, Antonson wasn't it? Was that the first? Yeah, Payne and yeah, Antonson, that was the first. Evans and Graham. Yeah, and then um, Armstrong got some Nyan became on, yeah. didn't he, for, a for a, a bell. Yeah. Um, and I think probably the team that we finished with that match is our strongest, apart from um, Antonson. Um, I'd swap Antonson for Graham and have Armstrong as the wide yeah. man. Yeah, I With Graham up front. Um, and if you don't want to play with that wide man, have that front three. Well, I suppose that front four. If you include Graham as the striker, then that that three that are just behind him of Payne, Dak, and Armstrong, have them uh, inter- interchange so that Armstrong still is able to be that goal poacher that I think that he can be. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Um, it was three. The, I think the main thing was it was three points. It wasn't the most enthralling game ever. Um, for the, any of the neutrals that thought that they'd watch a better game of football, um, on Sky with Blackburn Bury, compared to BBC's offering of City versus Wigan, then I question uh your knowledge <laughs> of football. Um, I would have only been watching that if I was a Rovers or yeah. Bury fan. <laughs> um, but uh, they won't have had the neutrals won't have had a very um, fun time watching the game we'll say because it wasn't a good game of football but it was one of the most enjoyable games I've been to simply because yeah. it put us top of the league and that's something that I've never experienced in my lifetime Um because obviously I wasn't born for the, the Premier League. Um, I don't remember the season we last yeah, went up to we, we last got promotion. We did we didn't finish first that season anyway. We finished second, um, and the Worthington Cup win again. I was I literally have the <laughs> briefest memories ever. So I wouldn't even that that vague and and brief snippets of memory that I wouldn't even class them as memories. Um, so it was an enjoyable game because it was just it was good to hear we are top of the league being sang <laughs> even if it was by the small small sections of the crowd it was just it, it was an enjoyable game even though it wasn't yeah. the nicest well, hopefully now it's just the run down to the end it's going to be a battle to the finish it should be good hopefully we can get decent atmospheres for the, the last what, like five or six games at Ewood um yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah. I, one special mention to Bradley Dak's pass for Graham. That was a wonderful pass. Uh, we just tipped it, tipped it over. Oh, he's he's oh, he's a fantastic player, isn't he? Ah, you can't compare him to some of the greats because of the league that we're in. Um, but when people say he's like a League One Two guy, they're very much right in terms of his ability of, of passing. He's He's fantastic. The the way that he can pick out a pass, he's got strength about him. He's skillful. Um, he's been an absolute pleasure to watch this season. Um, I think him and Jack Payne together um, in the brief time that we've seen them two as a as a pair, uh, they could do some damage in the championship if we get the opportunity to to bring Jack Payne in permanently. And um, of course, no one looks at. Uh, Dak and of course if we are able to get promoted yeah well, I think we are going to have some serious interest in Bradley Dak in the summer um, but hopefully uh, more breaking I can't imagine that we'd look we'd look at selling him if we went up I think if we stay down then there is this, the chance that he could he could leave yeah Um. but what what a player he's been for yeah, us yeah he's been fantastic hasn't he um I certainly didn't expect. I knew it was well. I didn't know it was going to be good. I heard it was good, but I didn't expect him to be as good as, as he has been for us. Um, no, it's just the way that he, he has he has been. Like you say, it's it's just 
with players like that, they get the fans on the feet. And when you've got someone that... Rovers weren't breaking Bury down. And just that moment of magic was enough to just create create um, the goal that, that sent us to, to the top of League One. So... Yeah, it's, it's an absolute, absolute pleasure to watch. I think I think it's mainly because we haven't had anyone like like that sort of player, you know, an exciting player for quite a while now. I'm, I'm trying to... Obviously, there was Kenny, yeah. wasn't there? But I don't think he was as spectacular that that... as Dak, was he? I mean, he, he was quite good with passing. and no, I think he was a bit of a different player. I think that Kenny, for us anyway, played a, a deeper role than what yeah. Dak does. Um and I've got a bit of a sour taste in my mouth about that team as well. As much as I loved it at the time, um, I got a sour taste in my mouth about it just because I think that it should have done so much more than it yeah. did. Um, and that's not to say that I th- that makes Kearney any less of a player because he was fantastic and when he left, I was good. Um, but yeah, it's just the Dak... Dak is something else. I think it, it, it's, he, he's also something else because he's playing in a team that is performing well as well. So that gives Rovers fans a, a even sweeter taste. Yeah. There's so many threats there. So there's so many outlets for him as well. So that probably helps. Um, but I feel none of them would get any chance with, chances without Dak because we don't create anything without him. Uh, but anyway. Yeah, he's vital to the to the creative yeah. side of the team. So, as always, you can see the review for the Berry game on the website, roverschat.com. Uh, and then go over to Twitter, rovers underscore chat, and uh, follow. Uh, so, we'll go on to reviewing League One. This is a League One review brought to you by Rovers Chat. So, Wimbledon 1, Bristol Rovers 0. Substitute Joe Piggott struck in the third minute of stoppage time as Wimbledon moved out of the League 1 relegation zone with a 1-0 win over Bristol Rovers. Doncaster 3, Fleetwood 0. Doncaster got three valuable points to push them towards safety. While Fleetwood have now lost six in a row and have um, not picked up a point since being beaten by Rovers. Uh, back then, they were looking towards the playoffs possibly. Now they are one goal away from being in the bottom four. Gillingham nil, Walsall nil. Both teams in the middle of the table, so it's a decent point for both as they look to continue their unbeaten runs. MK Dons 1, Charlton 2. MK Dons have won in 7 and find themselves in 22nd, 6 points from safety. Charlton finally have not Bradford out of the playoff faces, but do face competition to stay there. Oxford nil, Plymouth won. A late first half goal from Sonny Bradley meant that Plymouth have now only lost once in the last 14 games as they sit up on the edge of the playoff places. While managerless Oxford continue the miserable run as they continue to fall down the league. Scunthorpe 2, Northampton 2. Playoff chasing Scunthorpe twice came from behind to pick up a point against relegation fighters Northampton. Scunthorpe have lost ground on the, top, on the top four after not winning in three. A big game for Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury nil, Rotherham 1. A battle at the top saw Rotherham take all three points and continue their 13 game on beta run. Shrewsbury dropped more points as they tried to keep up with the top pack while Rotherham have now won six in a row and are in hot pursuit of the top three. Southend three, Portsmouth one. Southend are now unbeaten since Chris Powell took over five games ago, and Portsmouth slipping further and further away from the playoffs after losing two in a row. So this was a Sunday game, Blackpool one, Peterborough one. Decent result for Blackpool after Nathan, Nathan Delfonso cancelled out Jack Marriott's opener. Blackpool haven't won at home since October, while Peterborough continued to slide after the four league games without a win. Um, yesterday's games saw so Shrewsbury draw 1-1 with Gillingham um, a late goal from Mark Byrne and Gillingham a point which uh, importantly kept Rovers at the top um, Shrewsbury dropping form continues after only one win in four 
Gillingham are continuing to slowly climb the table and have lost only once in their last 12 games. Fleetwood 1 and Portsmouth 2. Fleetwood's miserable run could not be ended by sacking Uze Rosler in the midweek or whenever it was. Uh, Fleetwood sit just above the drop while Portsmouth are aiming for 6th. There we go, quite a busy uh, week of football. I think they were all catching up, so we'll just quickly look at the league table. Uh, uh, I'm not sure who's first. Um, so Rovers sit top of the pile for the first time in the season. 33 games played, 66 points. Uh, Shrewsby are second with 33 games and 65 points, uh, with a lot worse goal difference. They are 11 further behind than Rovers. Um, so they need to get putting some goals in. Wigan a third with three games in hand with 30 games played with 63 points. Rotherham, who are on the charge of 33 games with 59 points. Scunthorpe have played one more than most of the teams with 34 games with 56 points. Uh, Charlton, 32 games with 51 points occupy the last spot in the playoffs. Uh, but there is some pretty mean competition there. With Plymouth 50 points, Bradford 50 points, Portsmouth 49. Uh, and then you've got a couple of teams, 46, 46, 45. So it's going to be a good race to the end for them lot. Uh, at the bottom, um, Rochdale, I think, must have the worst it pitch is. in the... Well, did until Spurs paid for the pitch. Um, but they've had so many games postponed <laughs> because of the pitch. Uh, 28 games, so that's what, five games no, behind the rest of the the league. Obviously, some of them may be, well, obviously yeah. because of the FA Cup, but they have had some games postponed. Uh, but they're set bottom with 25 points. Bury are 23rd with 33 point, uh, 33 games, 26 points. MK Don's 22nd, 33. Two games and 30 points, um, and then a bit of a jump to 21st and 20th were Oldham, and then Fleetwood, 36 points, separated by just one goal. Um, and then you got quite a few. Northampton, Wimbledon, 37. Blackpool are 17th with 39, so quite close at the bottom as well. I think up until around Walsall, Oxford, Doncaster, I think all those teams... Should be looking over the shoulders. Um, who would your pick to go down? Who, who would you say goes down? It, it's, I think you've got to pick Berry as one of them. Um, mm -hmm. Rochdale have five games in hand, but they also have only won one in six. Mm. Um, so they, they, they're not exactly counting any of them as wins. Um, MK Dons, I would say... At the moment, I'd say Fleetwood are going to go down because they are stinking at the moment. Um, but a new manager may save them. And I might pick one. So let's say Rochdale uh, are safe. Uh, Oldham survive. I'm going to go Northampton. So I'm going to go Berry, MK Dons, Fleetwood and Northampton. Well, do so you think Rochdale survive? Very interesting. So I think for me, I'd go Berry. Rochdale, MK Dons, and Fleetwood or anything don't improve. I think, I think it could be Fleetwood that, that uh, end up going down. So yeah, I go Bury, Rochdale, MK Dons, and Fleetwood. Yeah, I think if Oldham play anything like they did do against um, us in the first half and at their place, they, then they really shouldn't be in the position that they're in. Yeah. I mean, Bury are, are 23rd. Obviously, they must have had a really bad start, but they have, from the last six games, they've won two and drawn three. I mean, that's pretty decent form yeah. for a team down there. They were under, they were starting a bit of a revival as um as they came to us. They'd not lost in six, I believe it was. Uh, with two draws, and f no, two wins, sorry, and four draws. But I think they've left it far too late. They just... Yeah, the ten points away from. They've the been poor day. all season. Yeah, for all the talk that the Bury fans were saying at the start of the season, now they were gonna, gonna uh, get promoted. 
Um, they've been absolutely shocking. <laughs> Um, so while well, we see me, we did that. Let's pick the the top, uh, the four playoff places. Um, I'll let you go first. Who's going to finish third? Um, Shrewsbury, I think. Um, I just think that Wigan and Blackburn will have too much for them. Um, so I go Shrewsbury will finish third. In fact, no, I'm going to say Rotherham finish third and Shrewsbury will finish fourth. Yeah. Um, according to this is only one Shrewsbury fan that I've seen um, but he's saying that they're really starting to, to struggle a little bit now um, and obviously they're in, not in great form so um, I think maybe if they continue to struggle Rotherham looking like they're, they're going to carry on so it's going for, I'll not say not far away from them really are they they aren't but I think that the Scunthorpe aren't in great form either. Uh, no. I think Rotherham finished third, Shrewsbury finished fourth, Scunthorpe probably fifth, and then that sixth place, I'm going to go Plymouth Argyle. Yeah, I'm, I'm going exactly the same. They're in, they're in good form. Uh, granted, Charlton, I've got two games on them. That, uh, I've got two, we'll have two games to hand on them. Yeah. Um, and... But like we said, points on the board is what matters. Um, and Plymouth are in fantastic form at the moment. So you look at the goal difference in the league. I mean, the top the top five is, is plus 10. And then you get further down. And like Charlton is sixth with four. Plymouth is, are equal. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bradford minus two. I mean, the goal, goal difference isn't great in this league, is it? It's not. But then you look at Peterborough, they're eight. Yeah. Piece per eight, you have to go up to fifth to find the better goal dif- to find a better goal difference. Um, obviously, we're we're on twenty eight. They're on Wigan are on thirty eight. So Wigan's defence has been fantastic this season. Um, until late. So yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> five, until until five very recent two games. Um. Yeah. So. Yeah, uh, yeah, we've just got to see, haven't we? It's it's an interesting yeah, it's league. It's building that's up for sure. quite a good finish in, in every area, really. Um, but the main one is the top spot. Mm. If not, we can't get that second spot. As long as we go up, that is all that matters, I think. I don't really think it matters where we finish. Um, but yeah, that's League One review. That was quite an extensive re- yeah. uh, review of League One this week. Um, so yeah. Uh, let's move on. I've got a couple of things I've uh, I've brought down. Tomorrow marks uh, the hundred uh, hundred Jesus. Uh, it marks a year of Tony Marlborough being in charge. How would you sum up that year? Obviously, the, the end of his first season wasn't great, but how would you sum up his uh, influence and impact at the, at the club? Um. Well. After the disaster that was Owen Coyle, we needed someone to come in and bring a bit of pride back to the club. And for me, Mowbray has been more than just a football manager. When I hear him speak, it's not someone that's towing a company line. This is someone that acknowledges that there have been problems at this football club that there have been mistakes. This is someone that wants to turn that around. And he's been an absolute breath of fresh air after the the people... We've, we've had arrogant managers come in like Paul Lambert who think that you know, they just they th- Lambert came in with an arrogance about him, and he thought he was better than what he was. Coyle came in, and Coyle, how he continues to get jobs in football, I will never know. But Coyle came in and did terrible. Before him, you had your boyer who, for every good thing that he did, I just think. 
like I said earlier on, that I have a bit of a sour taste of that team because I think it should have done so much better. That's not to say that Boyer didn't do a fantastic job because Boyer most certainly didn't. I have uh, absolute ton of respect for that man as well. Um, but after everything we've been through, Mowbray has brought about much more than than upturning results. He wants to leave this football club in good stead whenever he leaves. Whether that's because he's sacked or whether that's because he um, is offered a better job somewhere else or anything like that. He wants to leave this football club in, in, in good hands once he's gone um, onto pastures new. And that's important for me. I mean, what do you think about the, the, the job he's done? Yeah, I think he's, he's like you said, as soon as he started, you could tell there was, there was something different about him because all he did was he, he, the way he talked about football um, was was brilliant. And he's the sort of person you can just tell can sit there and talk about football. And it seems like his life is football. You know, he, he eats, drinks, sleeps football. Um, so I think it was, it was nice to have someone that seems so committed because um, when Lambert signed, it was all like, oh, I've been watching Barcelona and I've been talking to my mate Pep and um, all that rubbish. So it just, yeah, it, it just seems a genuine person, doesn't he? Like you say. Um, so yeah, it's, mm. it's been good. Um, he's had a lot of hate from, from people, though, hasn't he, over the, the year. Yeah, he's had unwarranted hate as well. Um, it's surprising that the game that I remember someone, I can't think who it was, someone on Twitter said that until Venkis did what was best for the club, he was going to put a picture of Mowbray and put hashtag <laughs> Mowbray out every single day until he was sacked. And I just thought, what are you doing, you moron? Um, and I just, you know, it wasn't a great start for us. And that was a, this, this was after the Plymouth game. Yeah. Um, the draw at Ewood. And that was the start of, of the um, unbeaten run. So, I mean, yeah, he's, he's had unwanted hate and maybe sometimes he doesn't get his tactics spot on. I'm sure he'll be the first to put his hands up and admit that as well. But he's doing an absolutely fantastic job for me and... Even if results say next season we go up and results aren't great next season, if even if that's the case, and he's sacked, say I will never be left with anything other than them praise for him, simply because I just think the job that he has done has been magnificent on more than just a footballing level on a personal level yeah. where he's made me feel about my club again and that's that's just got one thing you just got to look at the, his recruitment like in the summer and January it was absolutely fantastic um, the players that he managed to bring in he had to rebuild the team yeah yeah, yeah he had to rebuild the team yeah. didn't he um, so tomorrow I think it's coming out tomorrow we have a nice little um, I think we have quite a few things to to uh, celebrate the the day, but well, there's one thing that we uh, we have is it's like a it's an image uh, with some stats on, and I think you'd be fairly surprised when you see this. It's uh, some of the uh, the numbers that are on here um, in terms of like, wins and losses. Uh, I won't go over it all. I don't want to ruin it, although it will be out by then. Uh, but he's put 57 matches in charge, and um, the, the one main thing is Derek Williams has played 54 of their matches. Which he, Mr. Undroppable. Um I'm presuming the three are because he was injured or something. But yeah, the, the, mm. I just think the losses, um the like eight losses in fifty seven games is that's a pretty good record by any standard I would have thought. Um It's not bad, is it? And the it's fact that our heaviest defeat was by two goals, which I think that's not too bad. No, it's not bad either. It's just, like I said, everything that he's done has been has been fantastic for the club. Um, and whilst he might not always get things spot on, he has um, he, he has 
got my respect, even if the football thing doesn't yeah. go on. Right. Well, thank you, Tony Mowbray, and um, we hope for many, many years of you in charge, as long as you're still winning, otherwise you can get lost. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> um, so th- I mentioned this thing to uh, uh, to a, a guy at work earlier, and he, he laughed at me. Um, but I'm, I may, I'll phrase it a little differently. Is Bennett on the path to becoming a, a Rovers legend? Um, he laughed at me instantly, and I can understand why, but I just mean the passion, uh, the, the commitment that he shows to the club. Um, he's not one of the greatest players we've seen, not by a long way, but there's just something about him, you know, if, if it feels like he really loves this club. Um, but is that me? Am I, <laughs> is that just me that feels that way? Um, no, I, I can completely see what you mean, and to, yeah, I'd probably agree with you. Um, he's not the most gifted footballer, and Bennett knows that as well. Um, but what Bennett does is give you 100%. Legend, maybe, is yeah. too strong of a word simply because I think that it's used too often. Um, for example, I look at Robbie Savage's time at, at Rovers and I thought it was brilliant for us and I have all the respect for him simply because of the, the effort that he put yeah. in. But I don't necessarily call him a legend and I probably think that Bennett comes under the same category as um, same category as someone like Robbie Savage. Do you play football manager? Uh, yes. Because in that, you've got your, you your favoured personnel your um your your legends and your icons. For me, Bennett is under that, that you know, favoured personnel. Yeah. Um but you know, he's he's not maybe not a legend when you look at the players that we've had, the likes of Shearer, oh, Sutton, no. <laughs> Douglas, you know, Garner, those players. But he is a fantastic servant to the club. He is always puts in hundred percent, even if that hundred percent isn't isn't a good performance. He always puts hundred percent in. Um. So yeah, I can see what you say when you say a legend. Legend may be too strong of a word, but I can completely see where you're coming from. Um. Because of the the way that you like you say he fights for the club. He, he plays for the the badge on his chest, you know what I mean? It's 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 more than just just the badge. It's like Robbers is yeah. sort of ingrained into him now. Um I mean I think he really cares for the fist club. Pump now. I mean every <laughs> Yeah <laughs> every, time, every picture you see from he's doing a fist pump. No, yeah, and it's just little things like that I think it gets the crowd going. It shows that he cares. Um and I have a, like I said, he's. I think Bennett is very similar to Mowbray. Bennett is the sort of player that you want to play for your club because you know that you're only going to get 100%. Even if that 100% yeah. is bad, that's what you're going to get. Yeah, well, I'm glad you didn't laugh at me. <laughs> um, no, 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 not worth a laugh. Um, the next one, players are coming back now. Um, the player Gladwin, who I forgot even existed, is is back. Uh, I think the other player that's not back now is Whittingham. Um, w- is it fair to say we have the strongest squad in the league um, when you look at the likes of of Armstrong, Antonson, Graham, mm. Dak, Payne? Um, who else is a uh, Samuel technically, but he's not very. He's not been excellent as it this this calendar year. Um, would you say we have the strongest squad in the league? Hmm. It's obviously between us and Wigan, but what are the strongest squad? Um, <laughs> well, we're top of the table at the moment, so I'm going to say yes. But as soon as someone else is top of the table, they become the strongest squad in the division. <laughs> oh, what a cop out! Um, um, right, with players coming back, I thought we just we could, we've done it a few times. We've gone over the the squad. Um, is Lenny Hannah Mulgrew the starting back too now? Or for me, yeah. For me, Lenny Hannah Mulgrew yeah. has to be. I think Lenny 
struggled a bit at the start against Bury. Um, misplaced passes and stuff. Maybe he's not 100% match fit yet. But um, I think that when you've got a full fit squad, Lenihan Mulgrew has to be the, the back two combo. Yeah, I thought Lenihan's passes were pretty awful, but I thought he defended fairly, mm. uh, quite decently against Berry. Um, yeah, uh, a shame for Downing really because he's he's been really good for us since he's come in. But you know what? What can you do? Yeah. Um, Smallwood and Bennett in the middle. Now we've got. Let's say we've got Evans, Gladwin, Travis, Whittingham, Smallwood, and Bennett. Do you still pick Smallwood and Bennett to be the, the in the middle of the park? Um, at the moment, yeah, because I like Payne on the wing and I want Armstrong on the wing. Um, but I mean, Whittingham can come in and do that job. Um, but say, yeah, Bennett Smallwood probably the the best midfield combo. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Do you think Travis is going to sneak in? Do you think he'll get his first league start? at some point this year? Uh, I don't know if he'll be this year because I think that it might be too risky to start him. If, say, there's a game, last game of the season and we've already won the league or we've guaranteed promotion in second place and there's no chance of winning the league, I think maybe then there's an opportunity that that uh, Travis comes in and, in and gets a start. Yeah. But otherwise, no... Um, not a star. He'll carry on with his impressive cameos from the bench for now. I think I've seen more from Travis than I have. Uh, it decent. I've seen uh, better performances from Travis than I have from Whittingham uh, and Gladwin and probably Corey this season. To be honest. Yeah, I think Travis has been fantastic. Yeah. Um, right, wingers. You've already said you want Payne and Armstrong. I'm pretty much the same. Um, are we saying that Conway and Anderson are a bench? Yeah, I mean, and I'm a big fan of Conway, as you know, but he's just really struggled, hasn't he, recently? Yeah, since yeah, he seemed to like at the start of the season. You were praising him, weren't you? Like we, he makes us tick, and then he got no, he yeah, got I mean, injured, uh, and then we came back and never really. Um, Got back into that. Yeah, he never really got got into the swing of things, did he? Um, I feel I don't know. Antonson was fantastic for us, wasn't he? Around like November time, he was. He's he's been unlucky because of the injury. But his form um, had dropped before he got injured. He had sort of sort of because he hadn't been playing as well. He seemed to have no. them games where he just he was like a split to second too slow or he was just didn't touch the ball too well and, and some a lot of stuff didn't go his way but he is another player that he will try yeah. and try and try for you yeah that's true he's similar to Bennett in that regards I think that he will run himself into the ground but when you've got Payne and Armstrong there there's, he ain't getting in that side I wouldn't have thought do you think Penn, after the just yeah. because I thought he's played well in I can't remember how many, game, how many games he's played, but let's say he's played four. I think he's played fairly well in three of them, and the fourth was okay. Why did he not start? Do you think he's done enough now to start every week? I just think that Mowbray was trying to. Part of Mowbray's problem, one criticism I would have for Mowbray, I think that he changes his team to suit the team that we're playing. When we should be changing our, we should be making other teams change their team to suit yeah. our style of play. For me, you go your strongest eleven, unless there's a reason such as fatigue or injuries that means that you do, you can't go with that strongest eleven. For me, though, you've got to go with your strongest eleven all the time. They just chop and change it a little bit too much. I would have gone for the same team yeah. that started Portsmouth. Uh, but he didn't do. Um, yeah, we got the win. That is the, the, so yeah. the main thing. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, right, on to Walsall. Uh, another game, currently 16th. Uh, they're unbeaten in four, two wins, two draws. Uh, when they came to Ewood, 
obviously their star player, Otzuma, uh, we were in the process. Well, we thought we were interested, weren't we? He didn't really impress too much. Although he's got, he's got, he is our highest goal scorer with 14. Um, so how do you think it's going to go down when we go down there? Are we coming back with three points? Are they going to cause us a problem? Yeah, I think that we'll, we should, we should get three points, but it's again, the same as I say every, every week that if Rovers aren't at the best, then there's a, then there's a chance that Walsall take the three points and then we're back at square one in, in terms of the league. So, I think that we do have the ability to win. Um, and if they play anything like they do, then anything they did against Blackburn at Ewood, then it should be at three points. But of course, football's not black and white, and and they could could pull off a shock. Yeah, that was. I was just trying to remember that that game. Uh, Danny Gray got two, didn't he? Uh, they scored and then Dak got one just after half time and that was pretty much it Graham got two in so yeah let's hope for that but a clean sheet um, but you can see all the preview to that game on the w- website roverschat.com uh, but head over to the Twitter and follow at rovers underscore chat um, so then we head down to Wimbledon on the Tuesday down um, down in 18th place uh, four losses in the last six, so probably the complete opposite to Walsall. Um, 16 losses, only three teams have lost more, and that's Northampton, Fleetwood and Bury, uh, all stuck down there. And they have the fourth lowest goal, if, uh, goal scored in the league with 33. Um, obviously, the, the return game at Ewood earlier on in the season wasn't no, great. No, it wasn't. Not at um, all. What do you, are we getting all three points this time? Um, I think that's again. Um, <laughs> it's it's Tom again, Stock you know, I don't want to say yes because should we get three points? Yeah. Do I think we'll get three points? I always think we'll get three points. Do we have to be at our best? Of course we do. Anything less, and we could mess up. Um, so it's pretty much the same same Walsall thing. Um, do you say we say we played well, or what, do you think Wimbledon are gonna give us any trouble, or do you think we would just roll them over? But what was that? So are we gonna roll them if, over? Or? If if we play well, do you think they will be able to cause any troubles? Or do you think we'll we're just gonna beat them? I think that, I think that we points. should. We should be able to. We should be able to. Um, we should have enough to beat them, even if they're at their best. Because if we're at our best, then we will beat them. Um, but that doesn't mean that they can't cause us problems. It doesn't mean they're not going to get a lucky bounce, a lucky goal. Um, doesn't mean that a refereeing decision is going to give them give them the edge. We should get three points, yes, and I would predict that we would get three points. If I was putting, if I if I bet on matches that involve Rovers, um, I don't because I can't bet on us to lose. And when I bet on us to win, <laughs> we always seem to lose or draw. So if I was betting on Rovers, if I was betting on that match, I would probably bet on the Rovers to get the win. Yes. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's it. I was going to ask you something else, but it's completely gone. Yeah, so you can catch all the previews to the Wimbledon game on Monday uh, and the reviews on Wednesday. So, yeah, that's it. Great week. Uh, we'll be in a hell of a position if we can win both of them. Uh, getting closer to how many games are actually left now? Is it, it 30, uh, 13? 30. 13. Um, yeah, 13 games. It's gone quite quick this season, or it seems to have. Yeah, it does. It, it, it's, it, yeah. I think it's because we're winning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's it. I want to, I can't remember what I was going to ask. Anyway, um, that's it. 
podcast over. Uh, we'll be back next week reviewing Walsall and Wimbledon. I'm looking forward to the biggie of Wigan. Um, so yeah, head over to roverchat.com. Head over to Twitter at rovers underscore chat. Follow and read and like and t- retweet. And uh, we'll see you again next week. Uh, obviously, thank you to Tom for uh, giving his uh, stock answers. And uh, not a problem. Yeah, thank you very much. And see you next week. Thanks for listening to the 1875 podcast. If you've enjoyed it, why not head over to our Twitter at Rovers underscore chat and let us know what you thought. And also check out the website roverschat.com for all the content that we've put out during the week. Thank you.